guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I am thrilled to be able to share this recipe with you. It's been a long time coming, and I do not know why, but I'm making my vegetable lasagna. It's incredibly easy and simple to make. You can play this up with any vegetables you might have on hand or that you prefer. Um, this is just a blend of vegetables that I tend to use over and over again, but I mix it up a million and one ways, and I'll share those um, those versions with you very soon, but uh, the lasagna is made out of a few components, so I'm going to break them down for you each one. We're going to start with a bechamel, we're going to start with, which is going to be the sauce. Then we're going to make a veggie mixture, a ricotta mixture, and a few additional ingredients to kind of pull it all together. Now let's get started by showing you what you're going to need to make the bechamel. You're going to need some whole milk. This is a blend of provolone and mozzarella that I've shredded myself. Some freshly grated parmigiano, some unsalted butter, a little bit of all-purpose flour, some nutmeg, and some salt and pepper. This is going to be the cheesy, delicious, velvety, incredible sauce that I could just dig in with a spoon, but this is going to be the sauce for the lasagna. Now what I have here is a nice deep pot because it's going to make a lot of sauce and you want to make sure you have enough room that you can stir everything around really, really well. Um, okay, so this is a classic bechamel. You first want to start with your roux, which consists of melting some butter. And once the butter is melted, we're going to add in the flour. Now you never want to add flour to a bechamel or to anything really like that without starting with a roux, otherwise you're going to get bits and pieces of flour throughout your, 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 your sauce and you don't want that. So, And you also want to make sure you, you cook the flour in the butter for like a minute or two to get rid of that sort of harsh flour taste. So I'm going to just wait here until the butter is fully melted. Add the flour and just keep stirring. And now roux is just equal parts of flour and butter. So it's always easy to remember. I'm just going to stir this around really, really well. Now I've mentioned this in previous episodes when I've made anything with a cream sauce. My mother would always use white pepper. I rebel. I go with a black pepper. That's what I prefer. But it is traditional in a cream sauce that you use white pepper. So if that's, that's what tickles your fancy, that's what you should use, but you know me, I like black pepper all the way, so that's what I use. This is looking good. I'm just going to keep on stirring for like a 30 seconds to a minute. That's what it should look like. And then we're going to start adding in the milk. And this is whole milk, by the way. If you wanted to make the recipe a little bit lighter, because trust me, I'm well aware that this is going to be a very rich recipe, which is why I only make it once in a while. This is a great one to have on your Easter table this year. But if you wanted to make it a little bit lighter, do half chicken stock or, or vegetable stock and half milk. That'll cut the richness just a bit. Now I'm going to just add my milk, a little bit of time, try not to spill it as much as I did. Incorporate that in. I'm actually just going to switch to my whisk. And I'm just going to pour. This is going to cook over about medium low heat for a few minutes. It doesn't take a long time or until it thickens. You don't want this to boil, like a really, really boil because it could split. And if milk splits, it's terrible. You have to restart. So let it go like this, medium low heat until it gets nice and thick. And I'll show you what the consistency looks like once it's there. My milk mixture is thickened up beautifully. You can see how thick that is on a one spoon. If you run your finger down through it and it st stays separated, then you know it's perfectly thickened. So, time to season this with some salt. Black pepper. It needs salt, but do be careful because you're going to be adding in some salty cheese. Lots of black pepper. Remember, you can always use white if you prefer that. And a pinch. And I mean a pinch of nutmeg because a pinch will make it taste great, a lot will make it taste like pumpkin pie. Not that there's anything wrong with pumpkin pie, I just don't want it in my lasagna. So, a couple grates will do the job. It smells phenomenal. Okay, I'm just going to add in about a cup or so of my cheese blend. Now, if you don't want to use provolone and mozzarella like, like I am, um, just use all mozzarella because the provolone will be way too strong, but I love that nuttiness. It's just beautiful. So that's why I do a nice little blend. I'm going to add in about half of my cheese. Oh, who am I kidding? There you go. Let's give this a good stir. Awesome. Now, 
this is going to be a great, great base with our lasagna noodles because I'm using the no boil lasagna noodles, which are great, save you a lot of time. And ever since I discovered them, I have not looked back and used any other kind of lasagna noodle because I don't have to boil it. I have to mess around with big pots and pans. So, all right, enough talking. I'm going to turn this off because this is perfect. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to move this to the back burner right back there so you can kind of sit and hang out so that we can get going on making our veggie filling. Now the veggies I'm using today in my veggie lasagna are some beautiful asparagus that I just cut into bite-sized pieces, red bell pepper, shallots, some cremini mushrooms that I just sliced, this is a 10 ounce box of chopped spinach that I've defrosted and squeezed out of any liquid, garlic, fresh thyme, and some frozen defrosted baby peas, salt and pepper, and olive oil. You don't have to use these specific vegetables. You can make whatever you want out of this. You could use zucchini, you could use yellow squash, you could use artichoke hearts and just defrost them if you buy the box kind, the, the freezer section. If you buy them in the freezer section in the box, you could just defrost them and use those. I mean, you can do this with whatever veggies you like. This is what I happen to use a lot because I love the combination, but uh, like I said, use whatever your fan, your, your tickles your fancy. I love that saying. I've never, I've never used it before, but I'm starting to use it now. And I like it. So what I have here is a really large skillet with just a few tablespoons of olive oil getting really nice and hot. Now to this skillet, you want to make sure you get a big skillet. If you don't have a skillet this big, do it in batches because you want to get a good amount of color on your veggies. I'm going to add in my asparagus. That sounds nothing better. Nothing better. And then we're going to add in our mushrooms. I'm just going to cook this together for about 8 to 10 minutes or until the veggies start to cook down, develop a little bit of color. It just smells so good. You can immediately smell the pepper and the shallots. You can also use an onion, of course. Ah, it smells fantastic. I want to season this with some salt and pepper, though. And then I'll just season it at the end when I add the spinach and peas. All right. So I'm just going to let this go for 8 to 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm just going to round up my ingredients to make my ricotta filling and then we'll be one step closer to getting this in the oven. And while these are going, which are cooking up beautifully, they've got just a little bit longer to go. We're going to make the ricotta filling, which will need some good quality ricotta. This is some pesto. I'll talk about this in just a minute. An egg, some good quality parmigiano, salt and pepper. Now, for the pesto, I usually go to, if, if I don't make my own, because honestly, and this is really the truth, I have not been able to find enough basil here where I live in my town in my local supermarket to make a decent batch of homemade pesto. They're just, we just can't find any basil here, which if you know me, you know I, I've been kind of going crazy over that. But um, my deli counter does carry fresh pesto, so I just buy a little bit of that. You can buy it at any supermarket, so just make sure it's a fresh kind, not the kind that's been in a jar for six months. You don't want to eat that. So. Let's get right into it. We're going to put my ricotta. We could, you can see it's nice and dry. It's a really good quality ricotta. I got this at an Italian deli. Great. We're going to add in the pesto. This is going to give you so much flavor for like one ingredient. So that's always a bonus, right? Lots of flavor. Lots of deliciousness going on. I'm actually just going to take my spatula and scrape it off because I want to get it all in there. Nothing better than gooey cheese, some fresh veggies, just all good stuff. I'm going to use an egg. I always like to add an egg to my ricotta filling for my lasagna so that it keeps it together. And some parmigiano, good quality. Make sure you get the kind that's got a nice thick rind with a stamp on it. That's what I'm talking about. So you can add as much or a little as you want. But let's be honest, a little bit is good, a lot is better. And then just season it lightly with salt because you've got the salty cheese and you also have the salty pesto. Black pepper. Now, like I said, I'm well aware that this is a very rich dish, but for once in a while, it's completely worth it. It's delicious. Just going to mix this all together with a spatula. That looks fantastic. Spread that on some bruschetta minus the egg. All right, let's check on our veg. They look fabulous. Look at the color of those mushrooms. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. 
Oh, that, that makes me excited. All right, so now I'm going to add in the garlic and thyme. A little pinch of fresh thyme is great with mushrooms and asparagus and peppers. Give that a stir for about 30 seconds. And not even. I'm going to add in my frozen peas. Frozen peas are one of the best, best bargains in the supermarket because I don't know about you, but I can never find fresh shelled peas in my supermarket, no matter what time of year it is. So, and spinach is also one of those great things that you can find in your freezer section because it would cost you so much money to make that amount of spinach, cooked spinach, out of fresh spinach. So, they do all the job for you, conveniently packed in a 10 ounce box. All you gotta do is just leave it out to thaw and then just squeeze out all of the juice. I just want to season this a little tiny bit more just with salt because the spinach and the peas weren't seasoned. All right, this looks good. I also have my oven preheated to 400. Super important. I'm gonna turn this off because this is done. Because remember, this, everything is still gonna cook in the oven, so you roughly wanna get everything heated through, but this is looking exactly how I want it. All right, time to get my noodles, my baking dish, my sauce, and get this thing in the oven. All right, so I've got my no boil lasagna sheets here. I've got my ricotta, I've got my bechamel, I've got my veggie mixture. We are ready to layer this thing up. Now, the oven's preheated to 400. I've got a casserole dish that I just put a little bit of olive oil in there and just brushed it around. This is not dirty, that's just stuck on because I, I've had this for so long. I can't even tell you. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take a quarter, so you're going to divide the bechamel into four, it's like a, you know, to four equal parts. The ricotta filling into thirds, like three equal parts, as well as the veggie mixture. Make sense? Okay, let's get started. We're gonna take a quarter of our bechamel and put this right at the bottom of everything. I actually like using the spoon so much more for this. I don't know why. I think it's because it fits better. Okay, on top of that, you're going to put in four layers of your lasagna sheets. If they go on top of each other a little bit, that's fine. You can always use a 9 by 13 inch baking dish. That would work beautifully. Then you take a third of this ricotta. Spread that nice and evenly. I like to use a spoon for this as well. Now, it's always easy to do your creamy mixture on top of your lasagna sheets than it would be to do it on top of your veggie mixture. So, always remember that anytime you're making lasagna. Just get this nice and even. Okay, now we're going to take a third of our veggie mixture and scatter this all over the top, as evenly as you can manage. Great. And then just a little more sauce. Just right over the top. All right, and now all you're gonna do is repeat the same exact thing two more times, until you're out of ricotta, until you're out of veggie mixture, but you still have a few pieces of the lasagna sheets. So. Get going. All right, and now we just have the last four pieces of the lasagna noodles, and you want to cover them with the sauce because these do need some sort of liquid in order for them to soften. Alrighty, that looks like it should be plenty. It's gorgeous. I'm so excited for dinner time. Ah, this is great for any holiday, of course, but any maybe Sunday night with a side salad and a nice fresh baguette or an Italian piece of bread or, you know, loaf of bread, I should say. Money. All right, let's cover this baby up with some aluminum foil. Wrap it nice and tightly. And this is going to go into your oven. It's been preheated to 400. It's going to be in there for about 45 minutes. And then after 45 minutes, I will show you the next step. Be this much closer to eating. My lasagna was in the oven. Wow. What? 
for about 45 minutes and that looks gorgeous. Now, I'm going to top it with the remaining of our cheese blend. Oh, I cannot wait to eat you, my friend. Oh, I'm very excited. And this lasagna is cheesy for cheesy. And I'm pumped about that. All right, get that scattered all over the top. You can smell the nuttiness from the provolone. And now I'm going to just grate some parmigiano over the top. Oh yeah, not too much because there's so much cheese going on. Don't judge me. It's a once in a while thing. And I figured I'd share my naughtiness with you. All right, this looks good. I'm going to pop this back into the oven. This time uncovered for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the top is golden brown and bubbly. And then you must let it cool for about 20 minutes minimum. 20 minutes or half an hour so that it sets and then we can finally dig into this. It's been like forever. I can handle this. After I put the cheeses on the lasagna, I let it cook for about 10 minutes and then I let it cool for about 25 minutes and look at that. Job done. Time to go home. I'm going to dig into this first though. Oh yeah. Smells divine. I'm super excited. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mmm. It's so hot, but one of the best things you will put in your mouth. I guarantee it. Go to laurainthekitchen.com to get this recipe. Make it for your family. Share pictures on my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. I'd love to see how much you enjoy this recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.